Good evening. Welcome to Northampton City Council meeting of uh, September 18th, 2014. I'm City Council President Bill Dwight. I will be presiding. Um, thank you all for coming and thanks for folks who deign to watch at home. Um, the way we start each meeting is before we convene and call the roll, we offer an opportunity for the public to speak on any topic that suits them. It does not have to necessarily be business that's before the council. Um, hopefully, if you're interested, you've signed up on the sign-up sheet. Uh, the rules are uh, please limit your comments to three minutes or under. We actually normally have a timer. The timer disappeared because our AV functions are kind of dysfunctional, so we'll, I'll just clear my throat when we get close to the three minutes. Um, I ask that you not over, run over the three minutes, and if, if I give you a heads up and say that you've exceeded the three minutes and you continue to, well, you're certainly welcome to wrap up in the last sentence, not the last two paragraphs or three pages that you have remaining to say. And, uh, and if you refuse to stop, then, then we, uh, the cameras are shut off and we go, uh, we go into recess until uh, we quit the chambers until uh, until until orders restored, um, and we've got a lot of folks signed up tonight, so that's good. So we're going to start off with that, and when you step up to speak, please state your name and address. And first off, Natalia Munoz, please. And and Gwen Agna. <laughs> Hello. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm here in my capacity as chair of the Human Rights Commission. Gwen Agna is also a member of the Human Rights Commission, and she's going to read something in under three minutes. Very good. Quickly. So, yes, I'm Gwen Agna. I live at 50 Finn Street, and I'm also the principal of the Jackson Street School. Uh, last night we were um, blessed with having a group of people come to speak to us as an ad hoc dialogue, dialogue group, members of a widely diverse group of Jews members and non-members of the congregation B'nai Israel who were been meeting in August when the Israeli flag in the front of the synagogue was vandalized. Um, as they uh, stated, we did not respond in an impulsive manner that but took the necessary time in a series of meetings to explore our reactions mindfully and to deliberate upon a course of action. There have been two flags flying in front of congregation B'nai Israel for years. These flags represent our connection with two societies, American, America and Israel. These flags do not represent political support for the policies of either government in power. In addition to feeling vulnerable, we wished that there had been a more visible and public acknowledgement of the incident by the city. We appreciate the actions that were taken, including increased protection by the Northampton Police Department, a Facebook post from the mayor condemning the incident, an article in the Gazette, and a letter to the editor from a private citizen. However, we believe that an official comment from the city or the Commonwealth would have set, sent an even stronger and needed message of reassurance to Jews in Northampton and beyond. Their statement goes further, and I can turn this in as part of our presentation tonight. But we discussed this and had a very good conversation with the group that came to present their statement to us. So we'd like to read our statement from the Human Rights Commission on the burning of the Israeli flag. We are the members of the city's Human Rights Commission. In early August, the flag of Israel was burned at the Congregation B'nai Israel. It remains an unresolved crime. At our meeting of the city's Human Rights Commission last night, about a dozen members of the congregation asked the commission to stand with them, and of course we do. A people's flag represents love and heritage, hope and perseverance. When one's groups, one group's flag is burned, all our flags burn, all our greatest aspirations are threatened. It is our place as members of the government of Northampton to form a strong band of solidarity and protection of the people who were attacked in August. We urge the city council and the mayor to take an incontrovertible official public stand against this crime and express solidarity with the Jewish community, which includes people who, ha who have great affection and loyalty to both the United States and Israel. We ask that you make public the progress of the po police investigation as it is a matter of concern to all of us. People have a right to live in peace, to not be threatened or harmed. The people or person who burned the flag of Israel sent a hateful message and fueled a sense of not being safe to a group of people. Such 
an act is despicable. So that was our, the statement that the five residents um, sent and gave to us. So we, the members of the Human Rights Commission, ask that you make a public statement about the burning of the flag of a nation held dear by members of our community and help this entire community heal from the wound that was inflicted upon Jews in particular and on all of us as well. And we also like to wish everyone next week who will be celebrating Rosh Hashanah the, and the New Year a very happy and peaceful one. The police department has pledged that they will be doing surveillance all next week. Thank you. Thank I, you. I let you run over because there's three of you up there. So I, I, we represent I, three minutes. I assigned you each three minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Jasper Lapiansky, please. Should I wait for Councillor Murphy? No, he can hear you. He can hear you. So, um, I actually came prepared to speak about um, a topic I've spoken about before. I'd like to briefly say that um, while I also condemn said act of flag burning, um, Northampton is also home to a less, slightly less visible community of Arabs and Muslims. I am a Jewish resident of Northampton, and I do not believe that the Human Rights Commission, nor the Northampton Police Department, nor the mayor or anyone in city government takes the concerns for the prejudice and the discrimination that they actually experience, indeed, rather than just in word, seriously. Um, I'd like to voice strong support for the proposal that Michael's bringing forward in a couple of minutes. And I would like to do, uh, say what I was going to say, which is um, I just want to make a summary acknowledgement of the progress that has been made and has not yet been made on the issue that I most commonly speak about, which is the ability of pedestrians and bicyclists to uh, accommodate themselves in Northampton. Progress that has been made. The plowing of the King Street bike trail and the Leeds bike trail. Full sidewalks on the new North Street. Preservation of the bus stop at the high school and a new bus to the Survival Center and River Valley Market, which I know that City Council and other parts of the government have a lot to do with. Um, permission for the Rainbow Crosswalk, I think is a good thing. Uh, what has yet to be accomplished? renovation of Pulaski Park, the repair and expansion of the sidewalk infrastructure, the implementation of at least a vibrant sidewalks proposal. I think it's very important that we do something in that regard. I don't think it has to be the one that's on the table. Um, the revival of the tree warden and tree committee, a reorientation of the approach to non-motorized transportation from leisure, as it is looked at now, to necessity. And finally, some level of equitable parity with motorized transportation and an active reorientation of city government policy towards a sustainable future. Um, the point in all of this is that in the time that I have been following this issue, the last two years or so, a lot of progress has been made. If you go back six or seven years with the building of all the bike trails under Mayor Claire Higgins, we're doing very well. And there's a lot more progress to be made, and I expect to uh, be here with you while you're making it. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Once again, spot on three minutes. That was. And I done. don't even have a time. That's very impressive. Uh, Ken Linz, please. Karen Linz, please. No. Mr. Murphy. <laughs> Mr. Murphy, please. If you could step up and identify yourself and your address. Smell a skunk now. Is this like skunk? It's me. He's here. Hello all, my name is Joseph Murphy, 65 Reservoir Road, and I'm here with the, the easement, and I'm the house that if the trees come down the river, my house gets taken out. So I already um, forwarded an, an easement for a little bit of time that's a little bit condensed. Uh, the initial one wanted access to the whole pro property, and I don't think you need that. So I, I forwarded one as best as I could come up with to say, here's the driveway in front, feel free to use it. Um, I'm sure my neighbor will speak for himself, but we believe we own up to the road. And there's, there's pins there. There's, it would be a good time to sort this whole issue out right now before we wind up bringing truckloads and 
of gravel and whatever across the border. So I don't know if, if it's moved further along or not, um, understanding if where, where the line actually is. Um, I do, an, and I, I've been on this for 13 years. Uh, and I always forward videos, I forward photos. Um, I think there's new information that I haven't received. So if there is some new information, um, I would very much like to see it. Um, I think you know, a number of you have my email. So if it's passed around, please um, send it my way too. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ken Lins now? Okay. And by the way, I, the one thing I forgot to mention when we were beginning this, uh, uh, when I was talking about public comment, councils are restrained and cannot answer questions. So if you ask questions of councilors, they will not be able to respond. So my wife is graciously handing out the letter that we got in July from the DPW. Um, and this morning at 7 o'clock when I was having my tea, I read my name in the paper, which I didn't know was going to be in there. Um, noticing that uh, we were up for a vote to take an easement on our property that we hadn't allowed by the city and we hadn't agreed to. Um, my wife and I, as Bill now knows, and I was talking to Ms. Klein a little bit, she'll know more, uh, have several issues with the city. Um, as our neighbor, Mr. Murphy, stated, we actually brought the erosion issue to the city. They didn't know about it until we started losing trees on the banking just inside the woods from my wife's parents' home. By the way, all that paperwork that you got today or two days ago, my wife and I own both homes. I don't know why they're having problems with it. We get mail for 79 Reservoir Road to my wife, to the two of us, and to my mother and father-in-law who have been dead. My mother-in-law for 15 and my father-in-law for 25 years. So hopefully they don't get it. <laughs> um, but what we are asking is to this to be put on hold we certainly want the work done first of all if, if it cuts into the bank and far enough Mr. Murphy's house is going to go which was originally my wife's grandparents home these whole three houses were all one, one family at one time um, and we definitely want the work done I've been a general contractor for over 45 years we aren't getting any frost till January and I'll stake my life on it and we haven't for the last 20 years we just don't anymore and if we do it goes away because we have warming trends and cold trends but we don't have deep frost I plow also so we're asking just for 30 days I've we've asked mr. Dwight to put this group together with us with the city the mayor and whoever else deems necessary to settle our differences to settle our problems because we have two main issues and that is that in 1956 when the bridge went out and the hurricane went through which most of you weren't alive. My wife and I were, but we were little guys. The brook was on the other side of the road. And where Jonathan Wright is building homes up on that hill, there were the Rollinses lived there and there was a house. They had a bridge to their house. But when it all wiped out, the brook came on our side. <clears throat> so the city in their infinite wisdom said, okay, we're gonna make a driveway along the brook out by the front house. And my father-in-law had a road to the uh, driveway to the road. And so they got a road. We ended up with this long driveway. They took a taking without doing a taking. So the what we just sent you were the maps that we got from the city. It'll show you, I highlighted it in green, where our property line goes, which is in the middle of the brook that we've been paying taxes on since 1956. And we've been trying to straighten out with the city since before this issue, um, not since 56, but that's why we're here. We want to use this to get to there to solve it all so we finally have other issues resolved. Also, the letter you got says that there's no payment for all this work i don't know why they want to go up halfway up our lawn in our driveway they don't need to park there if it's all done correctly they can park right in the woods and we can get them there with no big issues we also have two young children that we don't want trucks running in and out they go to school back and forth nine and five they ride their bikes on the lawn you know we've created a nice little homestead but we don't want to have it ruined there's a lot of issues to be talked about is what we want to do and we if everybody comes to the table we can solve it in 30 days and we will definitely be here to vote for you folks to say, get it done. Uh, why we need an easement until 2016 is beyond me. Uh, back actually when we started this, that out would have been fixed for about 50 grand. So that's what we have to say. We're asking you to put it on hold. Thank you very much. Uh, Karen Linz, do you want to speak? Uh, 
I, I let Ken run a little over. I don't know if he took <coughs> your time. No, no. My name is Karen Lenz, and I live at 71 Reservoir Road, but I also own 79 Reservoir Road, which I grew up in. So the land to me is precious. And truly, we are all in favor of having this fixed. From the time I was born, the embankment has eroded tremendously. And it was always such a beautiful spot. I grew up swimming in the reservoir. So I have a real fondness for that whole area. And we really want it fixed. However, truly, we were so disheartened today to read in the newspaper that this meeting was happening. Now you would assume that because we are the landowners of said property where all of this is about to occur, that we would have been notified earlier by letter, by telephone, something to let us know that this indeed was going to happen tonight, that you indeed were going to vote on an easement that would affect my property. Yes, we would gladly give permission for the city to use said driveway where all of this is about to occur. But considering what we just saw in today's map, I am appalled that it would use more than half of my driveway, half of my lawn, where indeed I do have guardianship of my two grandchildren both ages nine and five, which would leave them without any space to ride their bikes or to play. So I'm asking for your assistance and please tabling this issue tonight. Just give us 30 days. We would invite you all to come look at this area, look at our home, look at our lawn, look at our embankment that has eroded so tremendously. Please come. We want to solve this issue. Truly, when my parents were alive, it was my father's wish to have this fixed. Knowing that truly, I believe, we own the land under the brook and have paid taxes on it now for many, many years, I feel as though it's only just and right that we solve this issue as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, there's no one else signed up for public comment, but so if you have something to say and you want to speak now, you're welcome to. Is there anyone interested in speaking? Okay. I'm going to ask the secretary to call the roll, please. <clears throat> Councillor Adams. Here. Councillor Carney. Present. Councillor Dwight. Here. Councillor Klein. Here. Councillor Labarge. Yeah. Councillor Murphy. Here. Councillor O'Donnell. Here. Councillor Shara. Here. Councillor Spector. Here. We have a quorum. In fact, everybody's here, all in their places with bright, shiny faces. We're ready to meet. So, um, we first up, we have uh, Michael Nagy for a presentation. And Michael, let me move the podium for you. And this should work. You should be fine. You don't need to lose You have the floor. Okay, I'm Mike Nagy uh, from Twenty Hampton Court, um, and I'm representing Gain. The Group for Accessibility Improvement in Northampton. We would like to see Northampton be a city that is welcoming and accessible for anyone who lives here or visits here. Following that up, we have a suggestion for accessibility improvement in Northampton. It is the case in downtown Northampton that there are many restaurants, retailers, and offices with one step up, at least, to get into the establishment. We suggest that 
two foot or three foot ramps, size and number to be determined, be available from the Northampton Police Station, which is open 24 seven. One of these ramps may be taken out for personal use, length of time to be decided upon, with a deposit, some percentage of the replacement value. Um, uh, the first ramps will be donated. Um, the, to be taken out with a signature can require an ID or not to take ownership of the ramp for the lending period. And there are first draft notes attached, it says here, but it's actually on the back of your sheet. Uh, there is still much to be worked out, but this suggested accessibility improvement will benefit people with mobility difficulties, a group sure to increase as our population ages and assistive technology improves. Um, however, any of this works out. Uh, the police station would benefit from push button door openers. Uh, I'm not an ADA expert, uh, but there may well be grounds for a civil action lawsuit. A recently constructed city owned building that is not accessible. Uh, how did that happen? Anyway, Gain would like to see ramps available for community use so that people who use wheelchairs or scooters can have more complete access in Northampton. Um, in, and, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, please. Because uh, their, their counselors may have questions. Exactly. And you, and any, any counselors have questions? about this program? Councilor Klein and then Councilor Shara. I think she was first, you were first? I, I don't move fast enough. All right, <laughs> Councilor Shara, you were. Um, I, I really like this idea. I'm a little bit, I assume that each ramp would have a somewhat of a significant cost. And so I understand why uh, the idea of having um, some that you would give, um, I mean, an ID would make sense, but why can't I think of the word? Someone help me. When you, to take it out, you need Lateral. to give, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you need to give a deposit. I'm a little bit concerned that a deposit might limit, having to leave a deposit might limit um, some people from being able to take it out. Do you have any idea what? Well, that's, I mean, it's fine. That is certainly <laughs> a matter to be discussed and determined. Do you have any idea how much like each ramp would? I would, work? I'm guessing that these ramps will run about 130 piece. Councilor Klein. Um, thank you for coming to talk to us about this. I'm just curious um, about this as a model because it seems to me that putting the onus on the people who need to use the ramps doesn't make sense. It's a little bit kind of following, I think, um, Councilor Shara's comment. And I'm wondering if there are other models that you know of in other cities or towns where um, there's something that the city has done so that it the, the onus doesn't fall upon the people who need the ramps to actually mm -hmm. you know pay for them or put a deposit down and all of those kinds of all right things. I think that's a really good idea if the city could make things available now what I have done tried to do with this is reduce liability so that if the ramps go with the stores, that introduces a liability possibility for the stores. Uh, if the ramps were to go with the city, that might introduce a liability possibility for the city. So in this fashion, at least, I think, um, that the liability would end with the person using the ramp. And, you know, I'm, I certainly don't want people to get hurt doing this, but it would seem to me that that would speed up this process rather than, you know, I mean, we could raise all the sidewalks, 
but that's not going to happen. Councilor Bars and Councilor Shaw. Thank you, Councilor. Um, Michael, you were at our meeting on Tuesday, and we had invited several cities and towns who were ADA coordinators, and we also had, um, I can't think of his name right now, my mind went blank, from Boston, who's head of Mass right, right. of Disabilities. And you had brought that up about <coughs> what you'd like to do, and he said there are some areas of great concerns, he said, especially with portable ramps. And he said zoning is another. He also said the liability was a big one also. So I do know as of yesterday, our building inspector is coming to our next meeting for the Commission on Disabilities to ex explain what the laws are, what can be applied and not. So I think that's going to be very helpful to move forward and you'll know exactly what you're going to need and also the the business owners the liability on them yeah that's i'm trying to i mean that's the kind of point of this was trying to reduce liability because everybody's scared of that and ada requirements are a an inch of rise and a foot of run so you know for a seven inch step you need a seven foot ramp and I, I don't see that as being a viable sort of solution. I think with the meeting with the building inspector that's going to help you and your group to figure out which way you should go. Thank yeah. you for being here. Uh, Council O'Donnell? I don't want to leap over. Oh, I'm sorry, Council O'Donnell, you were next. Yeah, I know. Thank uh, you Council O'Donnell has an opportunity to speak yet. Yes, so. why don't you go ahead? Oh, thank you. Um, Mr. Nagy, this is kind of um, a, a, not exactly a, about ramps per se, but I'm wondering if your group um, or if you know of something similar done by someone else, if there's just kind of a survey of kind of the, the weaknesses maybe in downtown Northampton of where um, improvements are required or ADA problems are known to exist. Um, I, you know, I would be interested in, in knowing exactly where uh, in the city, we, we may need to um, be thinking about how to improve access. I'm wondering if you've done any of that kind of work. Um, no, I haven't. Um, I'm sure something like that could be easily done through Stavros okay. or some such organization. Uh, for me, it is, you know, strictly a matter of self-interest. I'd like to get into these places, but I can't. Um, you've already mentioned a major obstacle to taking them out from the police department, which is that you can't get into the police department, right? That's yeah, that's... Um, so that would have to be worked out. I think that's a really... Well, point. yeah, I mean, we certainly do need... I mean, it is, to me, amazing that you guys neglected that particular thing. I don't know. <laughs> My, so my other question is, would would you then need assistance? Once you took it out, would you be able to carry it yourself in your wheelchair? Or would you need further assistance, or how would that is up to the person taking okay. it? Out. I mean, that's the the thing is just laying it, you know, all on that person. Okay. And they you know, if that. they need help, they can get help, and if they don't need help, they don't need help. And then we, we would work with the businesses to train them how to set it up, I think. Yeah. I mean, that would certainly, the person with the ramp would need to make sure that it is set up to their specifications before they want to use it. Um, and you said, but there, there are certain places that even a three-foot ramp wouldn't be sufficient. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's lots of places. That, I mean, Caminitos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, that's no way is that going to happen. So you chose these sizes just for practical portability? Yeah, I mean, because, because to redo some of the, you know, two-step, three-step, you know, seven-step things, that would just require rebuilding. 
And what I'm interested in is not rebuilding, just allowing folks to get in. Uh, Northampton is, of course, an antique city, and what the challenges that Michael refers to actually, many of them are grandfathered in. And, uh, there's a certain threshold of construction that has to be done before they reach the requirement, the ADA requirement of conforming and allowing access, including door width and and ramps. And Michael, my question was. Um, there's no consistency in any of these step ups. They're all variable size and heights. Is there is this ramp adjustable in any way? Uh, I know it clearly doesn't yeah. conform to ADA grade, but it, right, right. But is it? Uh, well, actually, I've got some pictures of the one that I happen to have, and uh, no, it's not adjustable between you know two feet and six feet or something. It's just. Just a straight it's just, it's, wedge. Yeah, two feet. Oh, do you want to grab it? Yeah. Can I pass this? Pass that around. Sure. Um, Council LaBarge had her hand, but uh, Councilor uh, Carney has her hand up and That's she hasn't spoken yet. Oh, and just a quick question. So um, you referenced the uh, well, so one step up, I mean, uh, one inch to one length, one foot of ramp size. So, and, um, Correct me if I'm wrong. You said that is actually an ADA uh, requirement. Yeah. And so, my I guess my concern is if um, if we're not matching that, then are we are we creating an unsafe situation for people? Well, what we are doing is creating a situation where people will have their own judgment on whether they want to try this or not. I mean, the whole thing with this taking it out and all has been to get away from ADA requirements because I just I can't see Northampton doing what is necessary for ADA. So this would, you know, I'm trying to, in a sense, lay the liability on the person using the ramp. Uh, and I guess my a follow up to that question then um, that I understand the intention, but I'm not sure of the legality in terms of how that liability would actually fall Sh should the city of Northampton loan out something that then becomes something from which someone falls off because it's not foot to inch but, right right no you know, that's uh, the, I certainly understand yeah. that, and that is. The question, I mean, Northampton's got lawyers. Actually, the Committee on Disability has a lawyer, too. Um, so, and I'm presenting this as a proposal, and it needs to get hammered out. Thank you. Councilor LaBarge, Councilor Spector had his hand up. That's all right. Let him go ahead. Yeah, my concerns were the same, and I, <clears throat> I would suggest speaking to the Council on Aging lawyer, but also the city lawyer, because in my experience, if someone were to be injured, it's great to say, well, you've got it, and it's your responsibility, even if waivers are signed. So I would suggest doing that and seeing if this is even something that you can waive the liability. I, I would doubt you can, but. Right, yeah, I mean, I don't know. And I'm, I'm presenting this as, something that I think is a good idea and I would like to see discussed. Michael, have you talked with the police department yet on what you want to do here? Yeah. And what were their feelings? Uh, their feelings for, yeah, you know, that we're really missing something, aren't we? I mean, I haven't, you know, I, I don't know who the highest up person I talked to was, but it was, you know, I think the police department seemed to feel a little, you know, bereft at not having that accessibility. So, like I said, I think with the meeting coming up next month, it's going to be very, very helpful, Michael of which direction to go into with a building inspector, with the zoning and and the liability part of it. Yeah, no, I think so too. Yeah. 
I just want to get this on the table. I'm glad you're doing that. Any other questions, comments? Mike, thank you for your time. Appreciate it and your, your thoughtful proposal. And let's see where it goes in the hopper here and see if we can't get something. Well, I hope we can. I mean, you know, and I don't know. I've got my two-foot ramp, so I'm going to see if I can get into some of these places. And Let me know what you find out. It's what? Let me know what you find out. Yeah, right. It's not going to work, maybe, but we'll see. Thank you. Thank you again, Michael. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, here, and I'll reassemble stuff here. We have no other presentations. Uh, there's some public hearing announcements here. Um, there will be a Verizon petition for a joint or identical poll locations on Man Terrace, the public hearing scheduled for October 2nd in this room. Uh, time at 7.05. And also an announcement of a special joint meeting of the City Council and the School Committee. Uh, the meeting date is Thursday, October 9th. 2014 at the JFK Middle School Community Room at 100 Bridge Road, Florence uh, at 6 p.m. And the purpose is to fill the Ward 2 School Committee seat pursuant to Article 4, Section 4, 6 of the City Charter. Uh, people, who live, residents who live in Ward 2 who are interested in applying to be appointed to the position uh, would please email me at wdwhite at northhamptonmod.gov or you can contact the mayor's office and we'll forward your name for, uh, to be con for consideration and nomination. Just to point out, that's not a requirement. It's not, a, yeah, and I was just gonna say, it's not a requirement, you can actually come day of, uh, right up to the point of when point nominations are closed. The, this hearing, uh, uh, aspirants will have an opportunity to present themselves and their credentials and their reasons for running and the uh, joint committee of school committee and the council will then do a roll call vote so heads up on that okay. um, the any communications from the mayor or no okay uh, no proclamations resolutions recognitions but the one minute announcements we're up to that uh, councilors have one minute announcements council LaBarge yes um, I just want to thank our council clerk, Pamela Powers, for really doing what she has done for our committee on social services, veterans affairs, recreation, and cultural. She has gone out of her way because we had received an email from Councilor Klein of a good idea of getting out to some of the business owners in Florence and Pam has done that to the best that she can. And I want to thank you, and our committee wants to thank you for a job well done. Um, any other announcements, Council? Uh, um, this coming Tuesday evening, that's the 23rd, <clears throat> September 23rd at 7 o'clock, there'll be a meeting at the Clark School to discuss the future use of what is now the, where the swimming pool and the, rec the gym facility is to discuss some of the proposals that Opal has for that unit. What time is that? Seven o'clock. Any other counselors? Uh, I have this from the Veterans Council. Um, this is in relation to the Northampton Veterans Day Parade. Dear participant, um, and that you were essentially, the, under, the implicit understanding is that you're invited to be one. Uh, in close, you will find your invitation to participate in our Veterans Day Parade to be held November 11th in Northampton. I urge you to uh, encourage all your members and their families and friends to march on this special day of remembrance. 
Also, as part of our Veterans Day celebrations, the annual Salute to Veterans Breakfast will be held at 9 o'clock a.m. Saturday, November 8th at the Elks Lodge, 997. Tickets are $12 each and available here at my office, and the office is Norbert Rickey, um, or from other member organizations of the Veterans Council. Should you have any questions, please contact us at 413-587-1299 or fax us. Wow, fax. 413-587-1062 uh, or email us at riekee001 at comcast.net, uh, signed by Norbert Rickey, the uh, Secretary of the Veterans Council of Northampton. I also have a form here so the uh, counselors, can, we can sign up. Uh, Councilor Adams. Does it say what time the parade starts? Uh, here on the application says parade assembly will begin at 10 a.m at Lampern Park They're on Bridge Street by the school. And the parade will step off at 11 a.m. And um, it's usually the first really insanely cold day of the year, so dress a quarter. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> um, any other questions, any other announcements? OK. Um, we have an application for a taxi cab license, Jeffrey D. Miller of Three Market Street, Northampton, Massachusetts. And you'll see in your documents there is an application with all the tax taxes paid up, inspections, and qualifying other qualifying items all seem to conform. Uh, would someone put that on the floor so we can discuss it? I move to approve the Second. license. Second. Okay. Anyone have any questions? Mr. Miller has come before us multiple times as his, his fleet is ever expanding and so far uh, nothing but glowing reports from him. So uh, any discussion on the application? All those in favor of approving the application, please say aye. 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 And any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. The application is approved. Speaking of approval, we come up to the minutes of uh, September 4th, 2014. Move to approve. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve the minutes of tw uh, September 4th. Any discussion on the minutes? All those in favor? Sorry. A stroke. I'm back. All those in favor, <laughs> please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Um, we also have before us the meeting minutes for the Finance Committee of September 4th, 2014, and also Public Safety Meeting of July 7th, 2014. Is there an interest in? Move to approve. Second. Second. Three motions, any seconds? Anyone want to? Second. Okay. Uh, any discussion on the minutes? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say no. Any abstentions? Now, uh, we come up to the, the appointment of the auditor, and um, I want to preface this with um, essentially uh, I've got to own something here because this slipped my uh, attention. But you'll recall the last year when we were appointing the auditor, there was a discussion conforming to best practices to seek out a new auditor to get new eyes on, uh, on the city's reports. Uh, Tom Scanlon has done an excellent job, and uh, consequently, we have, uh, because of good financial administration and because of the reporting, we our bond rating improved. But what we were planning on doing was having the Finance Committee research uh, other potential auditing companies. Um, but what happened was essentially that got lost in the mix when Mary Madura moved to. The police department. She would usually the one who pokes me with a sharp stick, and she, she and Pamela have. I don't know if you can understand the epic amount of information that had to be transferred, and that's one that slipped through the cracks. And so now Pamela will be poking me with a sharp stick when it comes up to next year. But essentially, the deadline for this appointment was the 15th. We're on the 18th. That was three days ago. So uh, we're uh, in the interest of conforming to the charter mandate that we decide this by the 15th and since we're not doing that we're already late i um i made an executive decision to advance the scanlons again for this year with the understanding with the implicit understanding that the finance committee will be charged to start as soon as possible um proceedings to review uh new 
auditors potentially. And um, I'm welcome, I, I welcome suggestions or even criticisms if somebody has, uh, has any of those in their pocket. Councilor Speck. How about support? I'll give you support. Support, I'll take Decision, take things like this happen, and I think it's the right call. So, thanks for that. Councilor I, I was a councilor who, who raised the issue last year, and, and um, it's really important to have a different set of eyes. Scanlon, I asked last year when someone else had actually audited the books, and no one from this, that council, and I'm guessing this one could remember, and, um, and so I do think that a different set of eyes would benefit um, the city and and so that didn't happen so without you know I, I, I understand it was an oversight and I accept that but I won't be voting yes on this thank you I'll be voting no any other comments <clears throat> well with that up uh, Council Murphy I'm um, sorry. I'd move the appointment of Scanlon Associates for the audit for this year under the circumstances and I'll second that any further discussion on the appointment of Scanlon Associates uh, I don't know if this calls for a roll call, but I, I, why don't we do a roll call since there's already one declared no, so. Councilor Adams. No. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor White. Yes. Councilor Clyde. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Uh, it is approved, and Scanlon Associates will, and the, the money's allocated from, this is the only budget item that the motion that the city council actually has in our budget. This, that's our, our huge salaries, our stipends. Uh, next is the appointment of committees. And these, uh, the, there's two for referral of new appointments. Julia Chevin of 8 Cosmian Avenue in Florence with a term starting October 2014 to expire October 2017. That's membership begins immediately to fill the vacancy left by the retirement of James Durfer. And that's to be referred to ordinance. Yvonne Keefe of 40 Hickory Drive, Florence, term October 2014 to expire June 2015. And once again, membership begins immediately to complete the term of Joan Finn, and that's to be referred to ordinance as well. Is there a motion for referral? Move to uh, refer. Second. Any discussion on the referrals? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Next up is the Arts Council. It's a new appointment. This is uh, Cassandra Kellum of 222 Prospect Street, Northampton. The term to start October 2014, expiring October 2017. And the appointment is to fill the vacancy left by Robin Glenn. This is to also to be referred to ordinance, and I'll accept a motion. M move to refer. Second. 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 Any discussion on the referral? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? And lastly, a uh, new appointment for the Council on Aging. Alexis uh, Pel oh boy, Peluiera. I'm very sorry, Alexis. You can come and smack me later. In <laughs> 145 Spring Street in Florence. The term starts October 2014, expires April 2015. Membership begins immediately to complete the term of Joan Finn. Also, uh, move to refer to ordinance. Yep. Second. Second. Any discussion on the on the referral? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Now we're going to recess for finance, where Council Murphy will reside and, is, and um, take it away. Thank you, Pam. You want to call the roll of finance, please? Here. Adams. Here. Present. Here. Excellent. Two, two issues tonight. The first one um, is from FIRE. Upon the recommendation of the mayor, order that whereas Chapter 30B of the Massachusetts General Laws requires a city council approval for contracts exceeding three years, and whereas the fire department wishes to enter into a service contract for a power assisted ambulance uh, stretcher and power assisted stretcher loaders to ensure years of reliable service, and whereas a seven-year contract will provide predictable pricing for a period of years, now therefore it be ordered that the fire department may enter into a maintenance service contract for power-assisted stretchers and loaders for a period not to exceed seven years. Somebody want to move this to get on the floor? I'll move it to put it on the floor. Second. 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 All right. 
And I don't know, is uh, Susan or the mayor want to comment on this one at all? So the purpose of this order is to get your approval to enter into a contract that's uh, greater than three years, because we can, without your approval, we can enter into contracts up to three years. Anytime we enter into a contract that goes three years or more, we need council approval. And this is to maintain the stretchers and the other equipment that we've purchased in the last two capital plans. And we've equipped each of our ambulance with this equipment, which actually we have the power stretchers, which actually raise up, and then the lift assist, which actually brings the stretcher from the ground into the, into the ambulance. So this contract is for the maintenance of that. And Stryker is the company we got the, um, the equipment from, so I'm not surprised that they were the um, ones who came in with the bid. And this is um, brought to me by Deputy uh, Chief Norris, um, who is in charge of managing the ambulance. So. Any questions for yes. Susan? Yes. Councilor Barr. And the money is actually coming out of the general fund. Right. The, the, it'll be an annual maintenance contract. It'll be this amount, 30872 divided by seven years. So we'll get the same price for seven years, and it's already in the ambulance budget. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there a savings realized by a longer-term contract than the I, I, I believe there is. I believe that's why he is doing seven years, because that's as far as they were willing to go. But at least we're getting a guaranteed price for seven years. So that's right. That makes budgeting easy, too. So. Any other questions and findings? Then all in favor of a positive recommendation? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The other issue in finance is the matter of the easement that was referred to in public comment. And it, you know, it's unusual that we have a construction easement where the property owner comes and has some issue with that. And I don't know in, in finance, um, because I'm sure there might be other counselors that really want to weigh in on this. Um, how would you feel if you referred this to the full council without comment, because it'll then be immediately taken up in, fi in financial orders by the entire body. I mean, you, we can choose to discuss it here, or we could just refer it um, without recommendation, and it will be immediately discussed by everybody in full council. I'll, in, I'll in finance, make that motion. Is that second? Mr. Adams? Second. It's, it's, I mean, everyone's welcome to chime in, but I think we might as well just go ahead and do what you suggested. Mm -hmm. So uh, a motion to refer without recommendation. Someone make that and second? I'll make that motion. Second. second. Any discussion on that? In favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah. Uh, then a motion to adjourn finance. So moved. To adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we come out of recess. For those of you who are following at home and trying to figure out just <laughs> what in the hell is going on, we're actually now going, that was a mini internal committee that is now, we are opening up to the floor, and those same orders that you just heard are going to come before the council and discuss them as a full council instead of just a small committee. <clears throat> so first of all, uh, deja vu all over again. This is an order authorizing the fire department to uh, enter into a maintenance service contract for power assisted stretchers and loaders. Uh, this will be the first reading. I'll accept the motion. So, so, so moved. So moved. So second. second. Uh, any further discussion on this point? Councilor Adams. Actually, I, I, I was for uh, Ms. Wright again. Susan. Hello, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> Were you comfortable? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you'd take longer on that other one. So. Uh, okay. Counsel, Councilor Adams. Did, did you say that we don't necessarily get savings? It's just a, I thought the whole purpose was to get savings. It's, it's, to, it's to get a fixed price rather than savings necessarily? And this is on? On the, on the so, lifts. We're back on the lifts again. Oh. So we've come out of finance. Right. To catch you up. We've come right. on up fine. Okay. I'm, so, order, I'm so, so sorry. Back um, to the fire department. Right. So we need to have a maintenance contract for these 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 pieces of equipment. Um, so whether we paid one year or three years or seven years, I if we didn't enter a seven year contract, we would probably see greater costs. I don't know for sure. I can ask Deputy Chief Norris about that. This is the first reading, so I can get that answer for you for the next meeting. I'm sure, just out of curiosity. Thank you. But we do we do have to have a maintenance contract on this equipment, and the first year was free, so that's why we're coming to you now because we've had the equipment. Um, 
I have here actually the memorandum that's attached to the request, so I can read that if that, that might help clear up some stuff. Um, this is from Deputy Chief Norris, and this is I'm requesting through city through the city to enter into a seven year contract for service and maintenance of the fire department power loading systems and stretchers based on Mass General Law Chapter 30. I've secured three quotes for this service based on the value of this being under $35,000. Quotes were received from the following Striker. $30,872. MSAR or EMSAR, no bid. Uh, and then MedPro, no bid. Um, I'm requesting the seven year contract as an opportunity for our organization to lock in pricing over this duration, providing financial stability and, more importantly, ensuring we take care of and maintain this vital equipment in proper working condition for functionality and prolonging life expectancy of the city's investment in public safety. I would strongly encourage the city to act upon this service contract as the overall benefits are much greater than the cost. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. So that's the memo that was attached to the order. So any further questions? Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor White. Yes. yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sarah. Yes. 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 It passes in first reading. It will be subject to uh, another vote at the next council meeting in the beginning of October. Uh, now we come to the uh, taking, the easement. Um, and I don't know, is the council interested in having me read the language for the proposed taking? I'm going to say number 12. Sorry? I'm missing one, in, at least on the. No, this is another signature. Okay. Oh, we're missing something? No, I, I. Were you just skipping forward over one? I may have that. No, right. no, I'm now uh, up to the uh, easement. We didn't do the folding and inserting machine. Yeah, that was part of. Uh, the oh, that was part, part of. The, that was wasn't that. Uh, no, I'm sorry, it wasn't. That's, that's number sorry. three on the. That's, on the that's number three on the financial order. So, um, so in mind, well, why, I, I am. It's probably old. I am now at number agenda. two, which is the easement. The next one will be. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm. We'll be folding and inserting, and I know how much you like that. Mine so we'll is, get to that one. Mine is the other way around. Well, whatever. It's so, <laughs> so, um, back to my original question: Is the, is it the council's? Preference of a wave reading, or would you like to hear at least the definitions and parameters of the easement? I recommend you wave. I suggest you wave reading. Oh. Is there a Second, is there a or if you, yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, it's just, just me doing a straw poll. The um, uh, Ned Huntley is here to discuss this. If you, uh, I would accept a motion to recognize. Make a motion to recognize Ned Huntley. The the I'll director of the director of the DPW. All those in favor. Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? <coughs> Ned, thank you. You're welcome. Good evening, counselors. Um, I'm here tonight to ask for an easement. I've asked for two readings tonight for a temporary easement at uh, two locations off Reservoir Road. Um, to give you a little history on the project, uh, we had concerns back in about 2009. It was brought to our attention that the river bank was destabilizing itself. Um, in 2010, we applied for a FEMA grant a federal emergency management agency grant through the Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency. Uh, in February 2014, they awarded us a 75% reimbursable grant for engineering design, construction services, and um, to complete the project. That grant has an approximate value of $332,000. The project was estimated to cost about $443,000. Um, inside the package for the easement tonight, uh, the date of uh, 2016 is brought out there. That is when the FEMA grant expires. So that's the offset date that we have to work under, and that's why we put it out that far, just in case there's problems with environmental permitting, with the stream work that has to be done, and so on. So we use those cutoff dates that FEMA was going to uh, stop the grant money coming back to us. Uh, this particular grant was uh, actually in the budget of last year, uh, I believe it was last year, uh, from the Water Enterprise Fund, appropriated $125,000 towards this project because it is water commissioner property or city water property. That's why we did that. Uh, we mailed, uh, uh, 
uh, basically, uh, excuse me, I'm trying to look at my notes here. We mailed out notices in July for uh, right of entries to the three property owners. We received one back almost immediately. The other two were not forthcoming at all, so we decided to move forward with uh, taking a temporary easement to make sure we had the work done. The engineering firm that we hired for this project is also the same engineering firm that we're working on the River Road Retaining Wall project. So we're looking at, at trying to maximize the work that's being done by the engineering work in the field at the same time on both projects at once, and we plan to bid both projects for construction under one contract. So it's critical that we keep these two projects moving together down the road. We've already completed the borings on River Road because they were scheduled. We had to delay them for this because we needed to get this easement. The first thing we're going to be doing with this temporary construction is, is getting in there with a drill rig to do uh, uh, geoprobes and borings to determine the structural integrity of the soils. That leads us to go into design work. So this temporary easement will get us on the property that we need to get there to do the work. Uh, the borings are on city property, but we need access across the private properties to do, get the rig in there. Um, from there, during the winter, we'll do the design work, and um, when the design work's complete, we'll have a better idea if we have to take any permanent easements down the road to make sure that we can maintain that uh, control or that flood control wall going forward in the future. You were here when a few of the residents spoke on the property that you're addressing here in terms of the easements, and there are a couple of issues. One is the issue of do you need to use their property in terms of putting some of your equipment on in terms of their lawn? Is there another alternative that you could do? That's number one. Number two, there seems to be, from their point of view, some questions about ownership here, which they would like to clear up before anything moves forward. So I'd just like to hear your take on and what you heard earlier, and those two things. We haven't seen the design yet, like I said earlier, so we need access to our city property to do any work at all. Uh, with that, we could create the staging areas on city property once we know the design work and try to minimize the access across their property. We will need access across the property during construction also. This is why we looked at the temporary easement for at least the term of the grant itself. As far as the property lines, um, we had a professional land surveyor uh, do the work for us. We've had the city solicitor review the work. Um, we believe that where the property lines are shown in this plan are the property lines that the city of Northampton owns. In addition, in 1957, there was a road relocation due to the flood of 1955, and that's where that triangular piece of land that shows up in the plan that says uh, 1957 road relocation, highway relocation, that was taken for the new bridge that was put in that got washed away in the flood of 55, the hurricane of 55, and um, uh, the rest of it is a 25-foot wide easement across the two properties for mainly access at this point. Councilor Sharon, and then Councilor Bavarge, and then Councilor Adams. Um, we were given a copy of the, the letter that you um, mentioned dated July 21st when you contacted mm -hmm. the landowners. And you said you didn't get a response back. That's correct. Is there, is that the only communication that you make before you do a temporary easement, or do you, are there further attempts at communicating with the landowners? Jim Larla, our city engineer, he's not here this week, so I couldn't be able to confirm it, but he was to reach out to Mr. Linz about this. I thought there was a field conversation with he and Richard Parcelletti on this matter, but I can't confirm that he's not here. Councilor Barge and then Councilor Adams. Um, just going over this temporary easement, I know where the property is. I've seen the property from the road part of it. I'm hearing that, that apparently there is a continuous problem of this erosion happening. If it is not resolved, and it will continuously get worse, correct? That's correct. I have concerns also myself of hearing about the property lines. We're hearing a resident saying that they're not right, but you're saying it has been surveyed. That's correct. Okay, and they surveyed those property lines and have made the statement to the effect that the land belongs to the city, correct? That's correct. 
I would like to know, when the letters were sent out, why wasn't there a procedure? When you're looking at taking, I don't care if it's eminent domain or a temporary easement, of why neighbors don't have a special meeting with the Board of Public Works first before the letters are sent out and that communication is put in place. Apparently I'm hearing from the residents, they just received that in the mail in July and I don't know the whole scoop about what's going on there, but I do have concerns as an example with the reconstruction of Route 66. And I'm talking about many, many temporary easements. All the property pins that were removed never been replaced, which is very costly for people to have to do it on their own. I'm very concerned. Will there be an agreement for these families? Say if you're having big machine, machinery going in, say that their property ends up having all kinds of ruts on it, will the owners be taken care of? Will their properties be seeded? If they do have a problem, will it be reseeded? If their property pins are removed, will they be replaced? That is very costly. I have concerns with that. Will there be a contract for the residents of any kind of movement, especially the property pins and so forth? Well, property pins always should be reestablished if they're taken out. I can't speak on behalf of the Mass DOT project. We've been involved with that, and Mass DOT ended up walking away from that issue, as you well know. Uh, inside the order of taking, the language is there that um, we will restore the land to its previous condition, including loaming, seeding, and restoration of driveways. And if the seeding doesn't take, you'll come back and reseed. Of course we will. Contractor has a guarantee for one year from construction. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Adamson, Councilor Klein. Mr. Huntley, um, one, of the, one of the property owners spoke and, and was wondering why um, the easement would last till February of 2016, and you explained that. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the easement says that um, the temporary easement shall terminate on February 24th, 2016, or upon recording a release of easement. Will, will that be done immediately upon cessation of the work? Like I was saying earlier, we might have to take a permanent easement for future maintenance. We don't know the design of the project yet, so there might be some other form of taking down the road from this. And Otherwise, if, we're looking at a release at some point. And if, and if there is further taking, will, will, uh, will the property owners be compensated? Typically, they are, yes. Well, um, that leads to my second question, because at the end of the order, it states that no damages are payable as a result of this taking, and as much as the benefit to the subject properties from the stabilization of the banks of the, of the Robert, Roberts Meadowbrook exceeds any damages that may result from the temporary, air, temporary easement. So that means that um, they benefit from the taking, so they won't be compensated. But that, that's all that it says. Could you substantiate that? I that's mean, for the temporary easement. That's a temporary question is could you substantiate that I mean what I'm asking is um, what is the dam what is the damage that that the properties will face and and how and and could you and what is um, and, and can you explain the, the the cost benefit analysis that led to this statement which says that since that they're ben they're benefiting they're not going to be compensated the cost benefit analysis of the project is was done by GZA geo environmental who did the application to FEMA for us uh, any FEMA project has to meet a 1.0 benefit cost analysis, which means the cost of the projects, the cost of building the project uh, are under what the damages would be cost. So the project is a valuable project to proceed going forward. Uh, if this project didn't move forward at some point, the bank's still going to continue the road away. The driveways will disappear. There's private water sewer services that will be affected. Uh, there's homes that could be affected by this. And the city also has valuable infrastructure downstream. There is an existing flood control wall along the driveways at the lower edge, and there's a bridge there. If that gets around and undermines it, you could lose a lot of infrastructure in the city roadway. Would you be willing to forward the analysis to the council? I can do that. Thank you. My last question is, the, um, <clears throat> the property owners um, were notified, but you didn't hear from them. So, but 
perhaps they should take responsibility for that. But what's the harm in 30, mo in 30 days more as they've requested to, to sit down and try to figure this out? Is, do you support that? Well, number one, I'm not sure I, how I'm going to resolve any issues with the assessors, with billing for property. Like I said, we have a registered land surveyor who's done it. Our project's ready to go. We're trying to make both projects move in line with each other. Uh, it just delays it another 30 days. Um, and to do that, winter will be coming at some point. Ground freezes, and we need to get in there well before that. The situation. I know that they're concerned about the erosion, so um, it's not that there's, on their part, there's not any opposition to the idea of this work being done. I think that we have these issues. We have these issues that uh, Councillor Adams just brought out about wanting to wait and figure out. I think there are two things: the property lines, but also um, where equipment's going to be staged. Um, I'm not sure the property lines piece is going to be resolved even within 30 days, but I believe there is the possibility with at minimum the two weeks that it would take us to do two votes as opposed to doing uh, two votes today, um, to take two weeks to look at the property and really figure out together with the homeowners where the staging site's going to be so that it's not necessarily destroying their yards, um, getting in the way of the children of the family, uh, one of the families. So I'm wondering, one of the things that I really think we need to do if we cannot delay this for 30 days, at, at best, I think, or at least we can um, wait that two-week voting period so that those two weeks can be used intensively to work that out with the homeowners. So construction staging won't take place until we have all the permits and the design in order and approved by the state. That probably won't happen until at least spring. Probably the work's going to have to be done during low flow conditions of July, August, September next year at the earliest. So what this temporary adhesion is doing for us is letting us advance the design at this point by getting a drill rig in there to look at the soils so that we can advance the design. With it, you're talking a truck for maybe a day or two in the woods drilling two holes. Councilor O'Donnell and Councilor Murphy. My, uh, my comment was virtually identical to Councillor Klein's or my, my question. Um, I was also thinking if we can't do 30 days, if I guess it would be October 2nd, um, if that would be suitable. But if there's no rush on actually doing the work, you anticipate it's going to be done, you know, sounds like after the winter. That's correct. Is there a similar rush on the design that you need to get done? Is that why we're, you want two readings tonight? We wanted to move this forward so I had the easement so I can get the drill rig in there. Okay. That's the goal. Oh, okay. Is it, and just to follow up, is, it, is that goal substantially um, impeded by waiting till October 2nd? It just puts the design out further. It puts the engineers on hold while they continue to move the road project forward. This one lags behind. Okay. And they're very similar projects. They're proposed to be concrete retaining walls set in the natural earth. So they're, they're very similar projects, and that's why we're trying to do all the like work at the same time, and the projects just aren't sinking right now. Can I take the liberty of a third question? It's similar. Um, my, my third question is this idea of working out an agreement having to do with the positioning of equipment um, and so forth that Councillor Klein and others have, have talked about and um, the property owners um, suggested during their public comment. Is that something that in fact can be worked out um, at this stage of the process? And could this time be used for that? Like I said earlier, the bigger project is going to be the construction staging, which is probably a, a year away or less than a year away at the earliest. What we're looking to do is get a drill rig into the woods and we need access across their property to do that work. Right, no, I understand. And there is no staging area for a drill rig at sets itself up and stays idle for, not idle, but running for however long to take to do the probe work. And the probe work will be done on city property. We just need access to our land. <coughs> well, I don't think the property owner, 
mean, this clearly benefits them because their property is in imminent danger if we don't shore up this book. And I know it's been to capital improvements a number of them. So this is something we definitely need to do. It benefits the property owner and the city because we both stand to be damaged if this erosion continues. Um, <clears throat> my only question would be, they seem to be concerned with the size of the temporary easement. Are you real comfortable with the fact that you need an easement of this size to not only bring in the drill, because this is a temporary easement for the drill rig now, but it's also a temporary easement for the construction phase when that happens. Are you, are you comfortable with the fact that this temporary easement isn't bigger than it needs to be? I mean, they seem to be concerned that they feel that it's bigger than it needs it to be is. to accomplish both the drilling now and the construction later. Can this this easement was worked out with our engineers who felt this was ample space to do all the work we needed now and in the future. So in your opinion, it is not larger than it needs to be to That's accomplish correct. the goal. That's right. correct. And it couldn't be smaller in accomplish the goal. We don't believe it could be smaller. My comments were the same as Council Murphy's. I think what you're hearing is <clears throat> some discomfort on the Council's part of moving forward without kind of having the assurance that the where the staging will be absolutely needs to be there and needs to be on the lawn. So I would agree that perhaps we could do two readings on this as is our usual and in the next two weeks if not being able to discuss because uh, it seems from your perspective there's not much to discuss about the property lines but if certainly it could be more discussion about the staging area then we can come back and take a second vote on this uh, in two weeks. Uh, and obviously, once the project is completed, the temporary easement would go away. And at that point, once the project is completed, you could come back and let us know if we need a permanent easement based on the results of the construction so that we can continue to maintain what we put in. That's correct. So, okay, so now we're just talking about a temporary easement. But a permanent easement would be the time that we would consider compensation to the property owners if you know the temporary one comes and goes we accomplish the work and everything goes back the way it was a permanent easement would be when we would compensate them for for having permanent access to the property that's typically what's done correct right okay, okay thank you Specifically, i can answer this whole thing now i'm it's sorry can you uh i know this, i'm out of order but i can give them the right away well, well I, and um, and right. and i and i'm sorry because protocol doesn't allow the participation, but I'd be glad to talk to you about this. We can, we can, all, we can move to recognize him, though. Uh, okay. We could recognize we, him. Uh, okay, there's yeah. a motion to recognize Ken Lins, and it's I'll second seconded. seconded. Um, yep, come on up. Come on up. All those in favor? Uh, oh, yes, thank you. All those in favor of recognizing Aye. Ken Lins? Aye. Please, please, please stand up. Aye. Yeah, I got a couple questions. So I think if he, that, I need you to direct the question. Okay. So well, no, I mean, you got to talk to him. He's me. the one who said it. So I, yeah, well I need to know if he's, I, I'm not good at hearing. Uh, I need to know if you said you needed to drill. He needed to drill two holes. Is that what he said? That's that's what okay. I understand. Yes. I will give him the right of way to him to get his drill rig up there. I'm a contractor, general contractor. I know what the rig should look like up the driveway on the pavement. Pavement goes to his property or to your property, our property. Go in, drill his two holes. There's plenty. Even if he's got to take down some trees, out and gone. That's all he's got to do. Well, but in the meantime, I want to straighten out the issues. I, and, and, and actually to that point, um, as Ken alludes, there's a variety of issues associated with this. Uh, there, there, there's, and and there pay, there's pavement right to the prop, your, your property that he needs to deal with. And, so. and, and Mr. Lins and I discussed this earlier, and the in is interested in trying to broker some negotiations, and he's hoping that that this e easement allows them access to that discussion. And, um, but the easement is essentially a separate issue. But the and so what we're addressing are the concerns that you and your wife had mentioned and Mr. Murphy mentioned relative to this specific easement. So yeah. to, uh, that's Mr. Murphy has already given approval to October 14th? Yeah. I think yeah. It's, it's yeah. So he's property. approved and, you, and we you haven't done anything. But right now, I will even put it in writing that it's a one-time thing for one or two days for the DPW to go up, do their two holes or three or whatever they've got to do, and out and gone. If we can't solve all our differences by spring, you guys can come back and do an easement. I mean, what do I do? So, uh, uh, Councilor Carney. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. 
Um, I'm a little confused just because I, as I understood the request, you were asking us not to grant the easement until you could have the time to work out some of the things that we don't understand. And unfortunately, oh. I think I process. So, but now I'm a I big man is what I'm trying to tell you, Councillor, yeah. and I'm trying to make sure that you're not put between a hard rock and a, and a bad place, and they're not also. I mean, I will stake my life on it that by the time the month is over, we won't have frost where you can't drill. We actually have drill rigs. I used to drill around gas tanks all the time. Are you asking us now to grant the easement and no. to do the, so no. not to grant the not easement? Not to grant the easement. What I'm saying is that my wife and I will write out something, whatever you'd like us to sign, that he can, the, 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 the DPW easement. can cross our driveway, go up our driveway, go to the pro city property, do the drill, drill holes that they need. That's all the reason they got to come in until now, until spring. But I also want to carry forward with the issues that we have. Oh, correct me if I'm wrong. Sure. I think that what you're calling the cross over our driveway and go up the hill sounds like it's a temporary easement. No, it's me giving you the city the right of way for one or two days, period. Is that different? Uh, maybe, maybe I need to ask if that's a different no. thing. Well, is that I, a it temporary is. easement? Uh, allow me this then. Okay. Um, then my recommendation would be to proceed with the first vote as it stands. And in the intervening time, uh, you can we can discuss with the city solicitor and drafting some alternate. Well, proposal. I'm not I'm not in favor of what we got. No, I from, I, from I, you. I, I mean that easement goes up our driveway, which is there's no reason no. because you have over five acres to actually park your material or your machinery and everything else on once you go up our driveway. Again, this is what I'm recommending. It's just by order process that because each of these things requires two votes. Gotcha. one tonight and one two weeks from now right. um, that if we approve this as it stands it's not approved yet and in the intervening time that uh, the, a number of councils have referred to there is an opportunity to renegotiate and redraft possibly a, a different uh, order of permission or easement but as council Adams has pointed out Regardless of how you define it, this is an easement you're granting access to your property no. with certain with. Cer it, it no, because that runs almost two years. Uh, All I'm granting is two days. No, no but that is, that in and of itself temporary. is an easement. It's just not this two easement, weeks. is what I'm saying. So it, it's okay. and 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 and. Clearly, this is not the place we don't have. Uh, well, I'm trying to make it easy. I know. No, and I, I know it's not easy when it comes to government. And I, and I think the council appreciates, and I think the DPW appreciates the offer. So at this point, and I think it's a worthy one worth considering. And I and I hope that there's something. Well, we brought it to the DPW 15 years ago when it started happening. So I mean, you know, we want it done. I mean, um, well, we, sir, the one council. point of agreement that we all do have, I, I, that I do understand, is that this problem of erosion needs to be addressed ASAP and that's that's uh, well, clearly the landowners think that the DBW does the city so we'll start from that point of accord and then we'll work from there if I, I, I mean, my point I'm, I was I but, ba go. but basically my wife and I don't want the easement in place at all because we don't like the map that it's drawn on you know okay. there is a driveway there is pavement but also about how everything is going to be fixed Mr. Bard brought it up you know there's, there's a lot of issues here so, but I, so I'm willing to step over my wife and I and say, hey, we can get this a little bit done, no problem. Councillor Carney, you have. Oh, yeah, I just wanted to finish oh, my sorry. Text, sir. So, um, just so that you understand that even uh, if we were to pass this, as it was pointed out, this temporary easement as it's written tonight, no work can happen until we take a second vote, which would be in two weeks. Mm -hmm. So even if you wanted to say it's okay with me for them to go and start two days from now or tomorrow or do it for two days, no work can happen until we make that second vote, which won't happen for at least two weeks. Unless so they can't even do the drilling? No, they can't drill. They can't, they can't get, unless they can get there somehow without going over your driveway. I think we have to grant the easement was well, a good thing I stopped Peter, Mr. Parcelotti because they had already started without me signing anything. Correct so. me if I'm wrong. Do we need to grant them the, or, uh, Ned? Ned. Excuse me? Could. Uh, am I correct in saying that um, we, we need the easement for you to do the work, the, the drill easement. the two holes? The reason we're having the easement because the right of entry was not signed. I, the right of entry of what allowed us access across the property to get this work done. It wasn't signed, so we went forward with an easement taking. Okay, so I understand. So if actually if they sign a right of entry, then we don't need to go forward with the easement? At this moment, yes. That'd be okay, so actually if, as was just suggested, 
com you two can work it out for you to do something for a couple of days by him just signing this particular um, you know right of entry that's on the letter then all he would have to do is sign that and that would but then what he's saying is he wants to sign it and have you stop the work when he's you know when well, it's, it's to get his drilling done I don't have a problem with that I understand again I'm a general contractor I know what this all takes to do all the design work and they got to find out what's in the ground what's going on shouldn't take more than two days at the most I would assume right that's my understanding so after that he's off the property until we see the design we know what's going on because he doesn't need anything else his words were they're not gonna start anything till spring so I don't want to see vehicles running up and down the driveway going crazy I mean you know he just said so if we don't do anything tonight if we don't even take the first reading on this right. tonight and the two of you are able to work out a granting the right of entry for the two days, then yeah. it's possible you're in the same situation and then you may come back to us for the the permanent easement that you said may be needed for the construction my only thing is is that I want to go forward bill understands he can talk to all of you I'll be happy that we all want you up there we want to explain the whole scenario to you so just in the the um, should the course of the uh, action that Councilor Carney described, should the <clears throat> um, should the uh, uh, essentially the permission to, uh, that's granted by Ken to the DPW, should that not transpire in two weeks, we have the opportunity to revisit two this weeks. with two readings. Right. Yeah. Councilor Murphy, you were next, and then uh, Councilor and then Councilor Labarge. I'm assuming the fact remains we're ultimately going to need the temporary construction easement to actually do the work. So if we don't do it now, we're going to have to do it in the spring. That's correct. Because you're going to drill two holes now, but then theoretically come back with the whole dog and pony show and do the construction, in which case sooner or later we're going to need to have the easement. If it's not now, it's later. You don't need an easement, Mr. Murphy. You just need our agreement. The right, the right you just need to approve it. Right of entry. And, uh, you know, but also, you know, if there were if there are other property line issues, I mean, I really don't want getting this work done to be held in abeyance over other property line issues because it benefits the property owner in the city to get the bank stabilized to stop further erosion, the damage to your property, the damage to the road and our infrastructure there has got to happen sooner or later. So, you know, I, I would not support in the long run no. holding this up over other property lines. We don't want to stop this. Because this really, everybody agrees, this has to get done. David, it's got to be done this coming spring. We were hoping it was going to be done this summer. Yeah, it's All I want is over the winter is that we sit down as a group, come to a, a reasonable understanding of what's happening up there with the property lines and who owns what and who owns what. That's all I'm asking for. I've been asking that. Well, my wife and I have been married 45 years, so 40 years of it. Council, are together 45 years. Council Spectre, then Council. With the, 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 the intention that the parties will work this out, I move that we table this until our October 2nd meeting. Motion to table, is there a second? I'll second it. It's not debatable. Uh, so uh, roll call on the table. Councilor White. No. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shara. Yes. Councilor Specter. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. So the motion's table, um, and it will be reviewed to, and I, I assume date certain, which was the next council. Second. second. Yeah. Uh, so October 2nd, and, we'll, uh, and in the interim, uh, it, I've, it's clearly been expressed that the hope is that, that something can be arranged that accommodates the needs of the. Uh, Thank you very much for your time, Ken. No problem. And Ned, thank you very much for your time. with me tonight? Yes, I believe so. I don't think we have anything else coming up for you to. to, to Great. Talk. Thank you very much. Folding and inserting machines. Uh, yeah, unless you want, you have an opinion about folding and inserting machines on second reading. I think you should pass it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank Noted. you. <laughs> Noted. Okay. We are up. To uh, Councilor Specter, this is why he showed up tonight. He's been waiting for this. <laughs> she, this, is, this. <laughs> I have a different. Uh, it's the, it's I have a different order of. Uh, it's the, the second. <laughs> it's the second reading, for to appropriate from unallocated funds, eighteen thousand three hundred twenty-six dollars for holding an inserting machine. Uh, accept the motion to put it on the floor. So moved. Make a motion. Second. 
Uh, any further discussion? Everyone remembers uh, Susan Wright's presentation? Yep. Okay. Hearing none, roll call, please. Councilor Klein. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. 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 Councilor Spector. Yes. yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor White. Yes. That passes in second reading. Yay. Next up uh, is a the solid waste reduction and environmental protection ordinance, and that and that is referring to virtually every committee we have. So sure let's see is. Due to. Uh, Refer to Committee on Economic and Community Development, Housing and Land Use, uh, Board of Public Works, Joint Council and uh, Board of Public Works Conference Committee, the Board of Health, the Youth Commission, Energy and Sustainability Commission, and the Committee on Rules, Orders, and Appointments. Is there a motion to, to refer? So motion moved. to refer and second it. Refer everywhere. Okay. Any, any discussion on the referral? Well, just a, a question if there are so many places for this to go and it is. So this could theoretically end up still out there by December, in which case we should have the opportunity to bring it into the next session? Well, no, same session. No, it's the same session. Two session. Two it's a two-year term. Oh, OK, yeah. that's right. Yeah. From, okay, and the okay. okay. council is right now wants to speak right. to um, As one of the sponsors with Councilor Adams of this, is we want to give this plenty of time for a lot of public discussion. Though We're probably going to be asking that the council sponsor at least one, maybe more than that, public forums. We're hoping these committee meetings, there may be other meetings that will be held. So we would, we want to, hopefully this, this will definitely, we, we see this as moving beyond the new year, probably, you know, into spring. So we don't want to rush this through. We want to meet with all the people who are going to be affected by this, the businesses. Um, so a slow, long, good, full process like we did yes. with stormwater. Councilor Labar. Yes. And I, I thank you, Councilor Spector, with what you were just saying, because I think there is a lot of value in that of opening it up with the public. Thank you. Any other discussion on the referral? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I have no updates beyond the request for participation in the Veterans Day Parade. Also, uh, Council Barge asked me to remind everyone that the Pulaski Day Parade uh, is Columbus Day, uh, and that is memory serves actually steps off from uh, the parking lot over by what used to be Woodward and Grinnell. Uh, uh, the ba the, which bank is that now? It used, it to, be used to be the bank, but it's not there anymore. Bank. Anyway, on, on King Street, by friendlies, which isn't there anymore yeah. either. So I, I but uh, uh, councilors' interest in participating in that we have been invited. So, um, is there any information requests nope. relative to Charter Provision Two Seven? New business. I'll accept the motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you all very much. Have a good night.